good afternoon. It's lovely to be back home, but I've had a wonderful time. I've heard a Latin mass and a lovely mass today for my three daughters. And um, it was nice to have a change. Yes, so now I'm going to be sharing with you um, the daily mass readings for today, Thursday, 21st of July, 20. 22 and uh, I'll just start with one or two prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Angel of God my guardian dear to whom God's love commits me here ever this day be at my side to light and guard to rule and guide Amen Lord Jesus Christ Son of God have mercy on me a sinner Prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. The readings for today. The first reading will be from the book of the prophet Jeremiah 2. 1 to 3, 7 to 8, and 12 to 13. And the theme, My people have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, only to dig cisterns for themselves, leaky cisterns that hold no water. The psalm is going to be Psalm 35, and the response in you, Lord, is the source of life. And the Gospel for today is according to Matthew chapter 13, 10 to 17. And the theme is The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are revealed to you, but they are not revealed to them. Obviously he's talking about the apostles there. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Go and shout this in the hearing of Jerusalem. The Lord says this, I remember the affection of your youth, the love of your bridal days. You followed me through the wilderness, through a land unsown. Israel was sacred to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. Anyone who ate this had to pay for it. Misfortune came to them. It is the Lord who speaks. I brought you to a fertile country to enjoy its produce and good things. But no sooner had you entered than you defiled my land and made my heritage detestable. The priests have never asked, where is the Lord? Those who administer the law have no knowledge of me. The shepherds have rebelled against me. The prophets have prophesied in the name of Baal, following things with no power in them. You hearers stand again aghast at this, stand stupefied, stand utterly appalled. It is the Lord who speaks. Since my people have committed a double crime, they have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, only to dig cisterns for themselves, leaky cisterns, that hold no water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 35, and the response is, In you, Lord, is the source of life. Your love, Lord, reaches to heaven, your truth to the skies. Your justice is like God's mountain. 
your judgments like the deep response in you lord is the source of life O oh lord how precious is your love my god the sons of men find refuge in the shelter of your wings they feast on the riches of your house they drink from the stream of your delight response in you lord is the source of life in you is the source of life and in your light we see light keep on loving those who know you doing justice for upright hearts response in you lord is the source of life Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Harden not your hearts today, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And the alternative words. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Excuse me a moment. The Gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples went up to Jesus and asked, Why do you talk to them in parables? Because, he replied, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are revealed to you, but they are not revealed to them. For anyone who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The reason I talk to them in parables is that they look without seeing and listen without hearing or understanding so in their case this prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled you will listen and listen again but not understand see and see again but not perceive for the heart of this nation has grown coarse. Their ears are dull of hearing, and they have shut their eyes for fear they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and be converted and be healed by me. But happy are your eyes, because they see your ears, because they hear, I tell you solemnly, many prophets and holy men long to see what you see and never saw it, to hear you, what you hear and never heard it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And that still applies today. Jesus' words remain the same. The same yesterday, today and tomorrow. People still have the same choices to see or to hear and to understand. And so now 
Yeah, I'll just reflect on this 16th week, Thursday, in ordinary time, Matthew 13, 10 to 17. The words today, in today's Gospel reading, suggest that there is a difference between looking and seeing and between listening and hearing. It is possible to look without really seeing and to listen without really hearing. What do we see when we look? What do we hear when we listen? Jesus complains that when many of his contemporaries looked upon him, they did not see him for who he truly was. The one through whom God was powerfully at work and in whom God was uniquely present. When they listened to him, they did not hear his words as words from God. In contrast to many of his contemporaries, Jesus declares his disciples, those who are living with him and travel with him, to be blessed because they saw Jesus for who he really was when they looked upon him and when they listened to what he said they heard God's word. Jesus reflected in sadness on the failure of many to see and hear because in turning towards him with open eyes and attentive ears they would have been healed by Jesus in the language of Isaiah whom Jesus quotes where do we stand? Is it with many of Jesus' contemporaries or with his disciples? We would all want to be embraced by the beatitude that Jesus addresses to his disciples. Blessed are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. Yet we are aware that we are not always fully attentive to the Lord when he speaks to us and shows himself to us. We are always on the way towards a clearer seeing and a more finely attuned hearing of the Lord who is present among us. Yes, I, I really like that gospel today and um, Father Errico preached very, very well on it but he quoted, he quoted a lot of the um, prophets from the Old Testament and how they saw and they would have loved to have been the disciples but they saw it in their spirit what was coming and they would love to have been present to Jesus but obviously they're present to him in heaven but... Um, mankind um, what can we say we have them all around us family members friends who who see us listening to the Word of God trying to share the Word of God trying to live the Word of God but it it doesn't touch them they don't see they don't hear they don't ask questions I don't know if your friends do and your a Christian but my friends that are not Christians that neighbors and such like they know my faith I don't hide it I don't hide anything but they're not curious which is sad my three of my own children I had the mass said for them today because whatever faith they had as children which they're children to me still but they're 55 56 57 going towards retirement aren't they all of them 
they, they, they're not interested in the faith that I have. It's sad. So I pray for them. I have masses said for them. They're not even friends with one another, which is really, really sad. And the daughter coming in now is my adopted. <laughs> I can hear the door going. She's, she's here. I've been here a few days. Yes, it's lovely. God gave me more daughters. I didn't have to go the nine months, though, <laughs> to have them. So thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and heal you. And I'm sending you his peace in abundance. And always be happy and joyful in the Lord. Later on today, I'm going to be recording healing prayers for every day. Daily meditations with the Holy Spirit. And also daily meditations with St. Augustine. And I'm going to continue with this is the Mass, which I typed up some time ago, but I have not finished recording it. But I'm planning to, but it's too long to do it all in one session. So I'll do some today and I'll have to break it down because it would be too, too long. It's beautiful. The words are beautiful. It's according to uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen's 1958 um, Mass. This is the Mass. It's a very beautiful document. And I borrowed it and typed it up and gave it back to the priest. So I must finish it. It is beautiful. It tells you how the Mass was up until Vatican II. Beautiful Mass. So God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye for now.